Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, we're going to be looking at the Pacific Division standings done on my on our live stream yesterday. Uh, we go, we put, I put the teams out there. All the people on the stream put their numbers into where they figure they're going to finish, in the, and then we average it out. So I'll give them the the community projection and my own as well, which was different than the community. And you can find this on this way. Oh, there will be frolic, but you should go there because there will be frolic. And also you have the Pearl of Wisdom show. My daughter made this. And for some reason, the guy put it like way over there. So I've got to go like this. So you can see the Pearl of Wisdom show. But uh, go, yeah, go check it out. I'd love to have you. It's fun, man. Just come have fun. Why not? Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today. It's all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Uh, if you like the four major sports and teams within those four major sports, you'll love Steel Flyers All Sports Network. All right, let's take a look at the uh, selections. Starting at number eight. I don't know if there's much of a surprise here. Anaheim Ducks. Come in at number eight. Um, I almost thought otherwise. I was looking at someone else possibly for the eighth spot, but I, I, I really think that this is the year that the teardown actually kind of happens. Uh, I think they did. If you look at the way this has been happening for Anaheim, it appears that Murray uh, really wanted – as many veterans around these young players as he could wanted it to rub off. He wanted the veterans to rub off, show the, the young players that they were bringing up uh, what it means to be a professional. Um, however, I think there could be a little strife happening in the room now. Um, getting guys like Adam Henrique, Delorier, uh, maybe to a lesser extent, Stent and Hampus Lindholm, maybe bring it, keep him along as long keep him around if he wants to stay. Um, he, he's going to be a UFA in 2022. So you've also got Josh Manson. Fowler seems like he is a lifer. He just doesn't want, I, I, I've heard that they've tried to trade him and he keeps on turning it down because he's got a no movement clause in his, in his contract or so it's very difficult. Um, Josh Manson, to a, a, a certain extent, too. Apparently, I heard he was going. He got traded to Winnipeg, and he nixed the deal because he also has a new a no movement clause in his contract, where I believe it's like twelve team no movement clause. Yeah, twelve team no trade list. So he can he can say the teams that he doesn't want to be traded to, and Winnipeg apparently was on it. Yet they tried to convince him, and he said, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, Ryan Getzlaff, obviously a lifer, nice to have. And now that they know that Ryan Getzlaff is going to stick around, apparently, like if he's staying this year, he's probably staying for good, I would think. Then you could just keep on using his uh, ab veteran ability to help these young guys know what it means to be a professional. You don't need to keep all of these guys around here. And I think that's probably what's going to happen this year. Now, how could they make it? Uh, I mean, An Anaheim Ducks listening here know quite well. They need huge years from Comtois, Trevor Zegris. You don't want to put too much pressure on the guy, but he is super, super talented and might be able to step it up in a big way this year. Uh, Dreisaitl looks pretty slick out there at 19 years old. Asking a lot for a 20-year-old and 19-year-old to lead this team to a playoff spot, but it's something they kind of have to have happen. Uh, Sam Steele needs to jump up offensively. Uh, at 23 years old, he hasn't really hit what they were hoping for, but he actually has kind of hit projection. I remember when he was drafted 30th overall, they kind people kind of had him as a as a, most of the scouts had him in the kind of a third-line winger or center, depending on where you decided to play him. And Max Jones as well. is Maybe they, they were, there, there was some more a little more offense expected, and there's a little more offense that could still come from Max Jones. But I think they need a lot more 
from those kind of players and Troy Terry before this team is really going to have a chance to have any uh, view of the playoffs. They're in a weak division. That's a possibility. And, of course, you have John Gibson here. But, again, John Gibson, John Gibson has looked fairly frustrated from what I've seen the last two years even. And uh, I think it's 28 years old as a goaltender. You're kind of looking like, all right, man, we might not be good for three or four years here. Do I want to waste all these years of my youth, young, uh, you know, at the peak? My prime is what I'm trying to say. Prime is what I'm trying to say. Sticking around in a uh, in a team that doesn't look like they're going to be making it anytime soon. I know it's hard to trade off somebody like John Gibson because those kind of goaltenders don't come around every day. But sometimes it's for the best for everybody just to move on and see if you can try to find another goaltender later. Goaltenders are the easiest thing to find. And if they if Anaheim builds their roster so with through like especially if they can get right or Bedard or both, maybe you don't need a goaltender quite as good as Gibson in the future. But I really think they should be dra- grabbing draft picks this year with these guys and moving on and possibly you know bring in some other free agents that want to make a name for themselves or whatever that are veterans that are still trying to hold on into the league or you know what their motivation might be a little different to be to help these younger players progress that's what i think i don't know what you guys think tell me down there in the comment section and let me know of course what your thoughts are about where everybody's going to land in the pacific next we have community had the san jose sharks as the seventh spot pretty difficult spot for the san jose sharks with uh, Kane, they don't even have Kane here in uh, anymore on uh, cap friendly. Uh, his status is up in the air with uh, other decisions that uh, other things that it, he he's cleared, of course, of his gambling. But now they're looking at COVID stuff that he may have uh, done some things outside of the COVID rules. Um, what have you? I, just me. I could be wrong here, but I don't. I kind of wonder if maybe the team made allowed them to investigate that, or maybe even motivated them in that direction. I have a feeling here the team is sort of looking for an out with Kane, because you have so many players saying apparently, this is apparently, apparently, a whole bunch of players do not want Kane back. Now people say, well, just because these are all rumors and all that kind of stuff like that, okay. Have you heard anybody say those rumors are not true? You think about this. In a player, in a, on a team, players defend each other. They don't call each other out publicly. You want to do that? You do that in the room. It's like a code. So if you have some media people or a big rumor going around that there's players that don't want another player on a team, you can be rest assured Somebody, especially Logan Couture, is going to call out and say, "Hey, what's going on here? We, we we love Kane. We don't we don't want this crap." You know, come defending their player. Not one person. So what? Uh, so, anyways, I actually don't have the Flames in seventh. Uh, I actually have, or sorry, the Sharks in seventh. I actually had the Sharks in sixth, and I think they could even have a better year than that, to tell you the honest truth. I think the Sharks could surprise people this year. Uh, you remove If Kane doesn't come back, uh, by the way, look at this. Jonathan Dahlin has picked up a spot so far on Cap Friendly. So, and they're in conversation, I think, a lot with uh, the league and the play- team and with uh, people within each team. So... That would be unbelievable if Jonathan Dahlin could come in and do something. Uh, 71 points in 45 games. That would be like the AHL of Sweden, though. That's not the Swedish Elite League. Um, Not really sure about why. He's putting up those kind of points. Why is he not playing in the Swedish Elite League? I can only imagine that he just doesn't play defense very well. But it looks like they're giving him a very good shot of making the team here. 
Um, but Timu Meyer and Logan Couture could have better years. Uh, I think with Kane gone, the energy in this room. I heard reporters saying that uh, I saw some. I saw one interview, or not interview, but uh, article in in particular that stated that when you went into the San Jose Sharks room and Kane was in there, it was like he sucked the life right out of the room. It, this guy seems to be like just a miserable guy, person. I hope whatever is causing that in you, Kane, uh, Mr. Kane, uh, you, you resolve it and come back because he's talented. He's talented. No doubt about it. But sometimes people, you know, past things, anger issues, whatever. Uh, I have no animosity towards Mr. Evander Kane, but uh, I more feel for a person who's in that kind of a state for sure. Uh, LeBanc, Hurdle, and Rudolph Balzers is not a bad second line. Like their top six, even top nine. Benito was a great pickup. Uh, Leonard looked fantastic last year in his role that he had and maybe even has some offensive upside. As a whole, this lineup isn't that bad. I still think Eric Carlson can come back better. Um, he's only 31 years old. He's had tr troubles ever since he went on that run with Ottawa and played on a broken foot. But no reason to think he can't at least come back and be a 50 to 60 point defenseman. Uh, uh, Kanizov has did did fairly well last year, and Ferraro played fantastic. With Brent Burns, it's you know he's getting up there in age. Um, it the defense, I'm not going to lie, is not fantastic. But I think with their forward depth and the fact that they're in a weaker division as being the Pacific, they could surprise. And Aiden Hill, I'm putting a lot of faith in um, Nabokov that is the goaltender coach for the San Jose Sharks, uh, kind of a goalie whisperer that he saw something in Aiden. And I remember watching him with Arizona last year. He reminded me of Mike Smith, uh, a young Mike Smith, a uh, warrior type guy. And that kind of attitude would be great for the San Jose Sharks. But that being said, I think we both feel that we have to see it. The community took gave him seventh. And uh, I gave them... Uh, sixth, but could be more, could be more. Next, the community took Calgary as in the number six spot. And uh, I actually had Calgary in the number seven spot. I don't really have much faith in this team. Sorry, Calgary fans. Um, I, I did like the signing of Blake Coleman. I $5 million does seem a little steep, but I get it. I mean, those kind of guys that can put up 40 to 50 points and, and just, they just play the right way. Blake Coleman plays the right way. He's annoying. He makes your team very difficult to play against. And of course, all coaches, people say, well, this is a Sutter. This is a Sutter guy. This is any coach's guy. I don't know if there's any coaches out there that don't like a guy like Blake Coleman. Uh, I, it seemed to be a Cooper guy. Right? So, um, yeah, I, 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 I do like the addition of Blake Coleman. Uh, it certainly maybe frees up a little bit of math for Matthew Kachuk to not have to play that role and focus more on his offense. Um, and, uh, you know, Elias Lindholm, Lindholm is a gamer. I don't know if you'd call him a classic number one, but that top line is, is fine. It's The question comes after this. Everybody loves Mangio Panny. Nobody does not love Mandrill Panic. Uh, he, again, just like Coleman, tough to play against, plays the game the right way. Uh, building works his butt off to, for every point. You got to love that. On the opposite end of that is Sean Monaghan, though. Apparently, injury issues has been the problem the last two years. Maybe that gets rectified. This is going to be the big thing. Can that get rectified? Because Johnny Goudreau has been kind of propping. Monaghan up for quite some time, and it looks like they're going to play him again together. Um, and that's really the X factor here. If those guys can hit it, maybe I'll put them put them higher. But I need to see it, and obviously, the community need to see it too. There are some people that had Calgary eighth. Uh, I'm not a huge not a huge fan of Dubé, Backlund, Pitlick as your third, 
And uh, Milan Lucic is fine in the fourth spot, uh, fourth line, and that's where he should be. Uh, Brad Richardson, he's just old, man. He's old. Uh, it's okay. Trevor Lewis, okay. It's, they brought in some veterans to show guys what it means to be a professional in Calgary. That's what it looks like. It looks like maybe they had some guys on the team that they really felt needed a uh, veteran presence to show them the day-by-day what it means to be a professional and to bring uh, a sense of uh, – there was times when I was watching Calgary last, they didn't have desperation. And these guys like Lewis and Richardson, they bring desperation every time. But not much on the ice, unfortunately. And then defense is Nikita Zadorov. I'm not a Zadorov guy. I know he had good defensive uh, analytics last year in Chicago. Um, but he also had guys that were basically taking the puck right off the stick. He can't move the puck out. He can't skate the puck out. He has to move it to somebody really quick and move it out. And I just, I don't see too many players that Zadarov is going to work well with here in Calgary. And it was his first really good defensive. Uh, sometimes things can just be flukes. Sometimes stats, even with analytics, can be can be. You just watch him when you watch when you watch him play. See. What Zadarov does, he's very slow. Chris Tanev isn't the greatest skater in the world. Noah Hannafin is, and Rasmus Anderson. I don't like this combination. I think you got to play Zadarov with, with uh, Anderson and Hannafin with uh, Tanev. Myself, yeah, you know, puck moving guy with defensive guy like that. Juso Valamaki, I think, will be very good. He's had injury issues, but then you get to Eric Gerbranson and forget about it. And the depth. On this team, Connor Mackey could do all right. I don't know enough about him to really comment, but they're pretty high on him. Oliver Shillington just hasn't been able to put it together in the NHL. Um, and then you get down to Kevin Gravel. Like, there's not much is on the way of defensive depth for Calgary. And I like depth. I like to see depth on the defense for an 82 game schedule. Jacob Markstrom has got to play as Butt off. He needs a better than a .904. That is for sure for next year. And uh, I, I personally just don't see it. Um, offensive depth, it's not too bad. You got God in there. Jack Connor Zari apparently was ripping it up, but he got injured. Um, there are some guys that can replace, but overall, I'm just not a big fan of this lineup. Uh, so I have him in seventh. The community has him in sixth. Uh, Seattle. Both the community and I have them in fifth. Um, and most of that is to do, they do have a lot of depth on the roster. They have one of those lineups that's going to be by committee. I'm not sure what this Marcus Johansson playing center is thing is all about, but I don't like it at all. He's terrible at draws. Uh, they maybe This is the preseason, so maybe they're just experimenting with the possibility. But he's not a center. He should be playing wing. Uh, for sure. I love Mason Appleton. Watch out, watch out. This guy could put up some really good points. Uh, he might be the Verhege of this year uh, in Florida. Though Verhege put up some great points in Florida. Mason Appleton could be that. On the other end of the spectrum, I think a lot of people are thinking that Jordan Deberle is going to put up some points, and I don't think so. He needs. He's the kind of guy that needs a good team around him, especially like a good center. To play with, and uh, this is just not it. I just Wenberg is certainly not really that. He's kind of a perimeter guy that has some pretty good passing skills. Funny thing though, he scored more goals and got assists last year, so they had him shooting, which is good. And uh, maybe he's going to take off. Uh, there has been so much. Wenberg was expected to be a lot better than what he has so far. He's only twenty-seven years old. It's possible that uh, they figured that he's worked out all the kinks and he's going to crush it. Would be really good, great for Seattle if he did, and I certainly will have Seattle as a possible playoff team if that happens. Jaden Swartz, I love him, but so injury prone. Um, that's a big question mark. And most of the reasons why I keep teams out of the playoffs is when you have the more question marks, the more le less likely I think they're going to make the playoffs. And with his injury issues, I love him as a player, 
But the same reason why I love him as a player is why he seems is it see it could be why he's getting so many injury problems as of late. Um, Jared McCann, uh, I think, should be playing up here, and Johansson down here. Morgan Geeky to me is the most interesting player. Every time I see that guy, I'm like, this guy's going to be great, but he never seems to put up the points to go with it. But he's he looks really good on the ice. He's a little on the slow side, and I think that's the biggest problem. If he gets a skating up, could have been an awesome pickup. With Junis Donskoy, he's got to play in your top six. And that's what might hurt Mason Appleton is Donskoy can't play down here. He's got to be in your top six or don't play him. Uh, so that's going to be – that might push Mason Appleton down here, which is too bad because he's a very – I'd love to see what he could do in a more offensive role. Uh, but he's very good defensively, and he usually ends up going back in the third. He did in Winnipeg as well. Tanov, Shea, and Bastian actually is a really good fourth line. And that's what I mean by depth. This The third line is pretty darn good. Second line is, I didn't even talk about Cal, Cal Yarncroft. He could have a lot of offense. There's a lot of guys here that could have career years and push them into a playoff spot. No doubt about it. And having the overall depth at forward here could beat a lot of thin teams that are top heavy, like the Toronto Maple Leafs, Edmonton Oilers, Guys that have big top lines, but they're a little thin as you go down, their third and fourth lines could eat them up. The problem I have is you got a big question mark with Vince Dunn. I don't know what he did in St. Louis, but man, Berube was not happy with that dude. Um, didn't play well defensively is the main thing, really. But he just basically got shunned right out of there. So now he's going to a situation where I'm sure he's going to have an offensive opportunity but is he going to frustrate this team defensively? Adam Larson had a bad year last year. Now, that being said, Adam Larson had a choice. He could have went to uh, he could have went to uh, stayed in Edmonton. In fact, Edmonton gave him more term and more money. So it's possible that Adam Larson was just not happy last year in Edmonton, and he could get back to his normal. Uh, very solid shutdown type defenseman, which would be great for uh, for Seattle, of course, for the Kraken. Uh, Mark Giordano, I st I think he's still good, man. Thirty seven years old. I mean, this is the perfect spot for him, and he'll do that well. And I love Jamie Alexiak. Uh, I love the opportunity he's being afforded here to be a top, steady top four. And Carson Soucy, I think Carson Soucy could even take Giordano's spot or Dunn's spot. He is one of the most underrated defensemen in the league, no doubt about it. I love, love, love him. I'd like to see what he can do given more offense, uh, given, sorry, more minutes. And I think he's going to grab him. I think it's possible. Defense is pretty darn good. Uh, Hayden Fleury, I'm not a Fleury guy. I think he's a little overrated. Um, he might get beat out by some other guys down here like Chalosky, William Borgen. But all of these other uh, defensemen that they have here, who, by the way, have to clear waivers, a lot of these guys. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with that. Um, I'm not really high on, and that's the problem here, is if there's a rash of injuries in Seattle, I think they could be in big trouble. Finally, big signing of Grubauer. Had a great year last year. Overall, Grubauer has not been very good consistent. Uh, with consistency, though. He's 29. That could end right here. And if he's as good as he was last year, and yes, he had a very good defense in front of him, it could go a long way. That's the reason why I got the Kraken in fifth and po probably in the mix of maybe even making the playoffs because they have a lot of depth. The problem is don't have really much scoring opportun uh, off offense here. Uh, I don't think Everly is going to do all that well. Wenberg has showed well in Florida, but he's not in Florida anymore. And uh, all of these guys have never really pushed it offensively. Jared McCann could, had, did have 32 points, would have had 64 points in a full season. I don't know why this guy keeps on moving. Carolina to Pittsburgh to Toronto to here. Put up points everywhere he goes. I don't know what it is about this guy. But there's something that teams don't like about Jared McCann. Maybe you guys can tell me as the season goes on 
what it is that that may be. And then, of course, you got Jeremy Lazone. I think Jeremy Lazone will take out Hayden Flurry there in Seattle. Okay, Los Angeles Kings is what the community has next. I have LA higher. I have LA actually in making a second in this division. And that may surprise a lot of people. It may not. I think this maybe the people, this is the sexy pick this year. But um, the reason why I have them there is they have so many players that are ready to be on the roster and break out. And they've done so well at developing. Rasmus Kupari and Arthur Kaliev, I think, are going to be ready this year. And if they are, you can move. You, you've you got depth all through this lineup. Super depth. Um, if Kaliev can be anywhere near as good as people think he can be, he could even take the top spot from Ayafala or take it from Kempe. Then Kempe moves down here. And you're starting to have guys like Athanasiu on the third, on the fourth line. That is sick depth, man. Um, if Byfield is ready now, they may give him more time yet. But you still have J Jared Dolan, Anderson, Velarde. Dano was a fantastic pickup. Gives Anze Kopitar an opportunity to put up some much better offense. And I think he will have a great year this year. Um I think their offensive depth, especially for this division that has a lot of top-heavy teams, they could absolutely crush this year. And uh, very underrated, nondescript defense that is just growing and getting better every year. Uh, Tobias Bjornfort, I probably will take another step up. They just love, love, love him. And he did well last year at, at the uh, 20 years old. The young age of 20 years, he's already been a very good defenseman. Like, awesome. Drew Doughty, I think, is going to have new life this year and probably uh, put up some better numbers than he did before. Michael Anderson has been absolutely fantastic for them. Matt Roy. The LA Kings, I think right now, are the number one team at developing defensemen. Everything, buddy, that they, every player they touch, to develop, it seems, turns into uh, NHL caliber solid defenseman. And uh, then you got Cal Pat Peterson, who at 26 years old has been putting up some pretty decent numbers. LA did struggle last year. Almost all the young teams that were going through the COVID situation struggled last year. And uh, this is a different group, also a year older, more mature. And I think, and Cal Peterson with the uh, Improved play of the overall team. I just love him. I, I think he could put up some unbelievable numbers this year and do extremely well. Um, then you still got Kyle Grundstrom, Elias Anderson. Remember what I liked, I said about depth? Vladimir Kachoff is thought to maybe even make the team. Uh, Alex Turcotte, Fa Fagum Fagamo. I think it's Fajimo, actually. He looked really fantastic, 21 years old. They've got depth like crazy. So if they have injuries, they're still looking not too bad. Uh, defense, maybe, but Dursey should be ready. Austin Strand came in and did fairly well last year in his 13 games that he played. Kale Clegg hasn't really been living up to expectations, but he can play. And then Christian Willen and I. I think if they run into injuries, they're okay. I just I think this team's going to do very well. So, but we had the community had them fourth. Now, next we go to the Vancouver Canucks, and um, I had them fourth. I had the Vancouver Canucks fourth. The community had them third, and a lot a lot of people had them higher. Uh, and, and it's hard not to when you got Elias Pettersson, Quinn Hughes, those big young names, Brock Besser, and they got to be signed. And I, I'm confident that they will be signed. JT Miller has come over and played fantastic. Um, their depth is fantastic. Niels Hoglander, everybody is saying that this guy is going to have a great year, and I don't doubt that at all. So you have Hoglander, Horvat, and of course Garland. From that big trade that brought over Oliver Ekman Larson to improve their defense. Their top nine is solid. 
Even if you put Pearson here with Jason Dickerson, who I like a lot in the third spot, to tell you the honest truth, and Vasily Podkolzin, the, the, the buzz on this guy has been going on for quite some time. It's going to be really exciting to see what he does here. But this top nine is really good. And then Highmore, Sutter, Mott isn't too shabby, really. Depth could be an issue, although I like Zach McEwen. I don't know why he doesn't get more of an opportunity than he does. I'm, I'm not sure. Tell me what you guys think out there. Nicholas Patan, Sheldon Drees, guys at Philo. You don't want to see a lot of injuries because that's not like stellar, but they have played in the league and they can fill out the roster if need, need be. Um, as far as defense is concerned, that's where it kind of breaks down a bit. Um, Tra Travis Hamannix has stated that he may not play at all this year. Doesn't want to take the risk with COVID or something. I'm not sure. I don't want to speak for him. But if that's the case, this is where the trouble lies. Quinn Hughes still hasn't really become great defensively. Awesome offensive player, but not too great on the defensive side. Tyler Myers is not great on any side, really. Kind of an overrated player for his size and what he does. Um, he uh, Oliver Ekman Larson, I do believe will do better in Vancouver. Uh, the problem, I believe, in Arizona was under Rick Tockett's system, he got stagnated. However, apparently, um, there has been talk that he came into camp really out of shape. If that's the case, ouch, 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 ouch. Uh, because without Travis Hamannack, then you've got Tucker Pullman. And I'm telling you, I don't understand this well, how well, giving him two point five million for what till two two thousand twenty five? Winnipeg, he was like every time he was on the ice, it was like they, he was one of the reasons why you kept on saying they got to get some defense at Winnipeg. He did not look good. Slow. I I don't get it. I don't get why they gave him so much money. Really hope Oli Levy steps it up. Uh, he, he well with all the injuries that he had. This is a huge year for him, and I hope it works for them. And I, for Vancouver's sake, it better because the defense is suspect. However, that can all not even matter as much because of Thatcher Demko. Thatcher Demko is everything for Vancouver this year. Everything. Because Yuroslav Halak is probably not. He didn't put up very good numbers last year under a uh, but then B Boston didn't have the normal defense that they nor that they usually do. But Vancouver doesn't have a great defense either. So Demko, though, beast, 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 beast. Anyways, that's why I had him fourth. And uh, the community liked him in third for a lot of the, you know, top nine sexy. It's a top. It's a very sexy team that way in the top nine. Second, the community have. The Edmonton Oilers, I had the Oilers third. Um, much the same as Vancouver, except um, I have the Oilers higher because of Connor McDavid, of course, and Leon Dreisettle, maybe the best top two pairing in the league. Um, I'm hoping Jesse Pugliarvi steps up one more step this year. He's got He's big, he's solid, he's, he's played well two-way. I have a feeling he will. Zach Hyman is going to, it's going to be interesting to see how he fits in here. Uh, last, with Toronto, we had Matthews and Marner. And it was like, get the puck to either one and they can get it to each other. This year, it's get the puck to McDavid. Pulia Harvey kind of stands, he's, he's a stand around the slot and shoot guy, right? You can get him to him, but it's going to be easier to get the puck to McDavid because he'll be a centerman and he'll be in your sphere that you can do that. And Zach Hyman's a guy that is really good at getting the puck in the corners. That's what he's known for. That's why he gets the points that he does. Most of his points in Toronto were second assists, though. It was like pass it to Marner, pass it to Matthew, score. Now it's going to have to be pass it to McDavid and hopefully get it to Pauly Harvey or McDavid does what McDavid does, which is crazy things. Uh Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Dry Settle, and ya Kyler Yamamoto. Everybody's uh, rooting for y Yamamoto to have a bounce back year this year, and I think he will. That line stay together. Your top six is fantastic, just with Dry Settle and McDavid alone. 
After that, it sort of gets dicey, though. Uh, Warren Fogle, guy's got stone hands. And you're going to say, well, he put up this many points in Carolina. Yeah. They, But as they kind of figure Fogle out, he sort of has the same move. And once you figure it out, then he doesn't score as much anymore. He's not. He doesn't have the greatest hands in the world. Uh, he is good defensively, though. Derek Ryan is very math for me for a third line center. In fact, I think on really, really good depth teams, he probably would play fourth line center. And then Zach Cassian just has not been the same. I've heard rumors that they're trying to move him out. I don't know if he's out of shape or whatever. Uh, maybe just for cap room because Josh Archibald can play that spot. But we don't even know how much Josh Archibald's going to play unless he gets vaccinated. So there's some difficulties here, and I don't see all that much depth to come in the rock. Oh, well, Dylan Holloway, I'm not sure where he is this year, so I'm not even going to say. Uh, Tyler Benson hasn't been able to do much when he's been up. Uh, Brandon Perlini, this is like his fifth team now. He, he just It's got to a point now where he's very questionable to be an NHL player, and Cooper Merity has always had problems with the skating. So injuries happen and they could be in trouble. The big thing for me is Kyle Turris. I have heard that he's been crushing it in the gym this year, which apparently he hasn't been doing for a while because he's looked terrible the last three or four years. Maybe he can break it out here and make this a little more interesting, but I'm not a big fan of their depth. Top six, though, they're going to score crap loads. Offensively with their defense, they're going to get points uh, Nurse, Barry, uh, Will, and Evan Bouchard, I think, is going to have a fantastic year. Chris Russell's hurt, which is not that big of a deal, except for the fact that they have to, Slater Cuckoo will play more, which isn't bad. It's not terrible. It's just not fantastic. Uh, the defense, to me, is very questionable. Duncan Keith, last year in Chicago, everybody he played with played better when they weren't playing with him. What do you do with that? Cody Cece had a good year in Pittsburgh, but almost all defensemen that go to Pittsburgh for all of a sudden have great years because their forwards play super strong defense. It is like beaten down into them. Now he's going to be in a uh, Dave Tippett system that basically is like an offensive take risk, go like crazy and outscore the opposition. I think this team will do that. But I don't like the fact that their defense is so poor. I think they're going to be outscored quite often as well. Uh, and then, of course, you have the Mike Smith Koskinen thing, which if you're an Edmonton Oilers fan or you live in Edmonton, this is the big worry uh, for everybody. Koskinen didn't have a great year last year. Mike Smith, again, is 39 years old. How much can he do it? Like, There's a lot of concern there, so. We got him third. I got him third. Uh, the community has him second. And then finally, Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, I think that just goes without saying. Uh, this lineup has everything but question marks up the middle, just like it did last year. It's basically the same team. This is a weak division. Um the big question is how is Nolan Patrick gonna get his career back on track and Vegas. Uh, Chandler Stevenson is fine in the regular season in that number one spot, working with Pacioretty and Stump. Ultimately, though, I think they have to have a huge move in that regard, in that position, for them to win a cup. I still think that. I thought that last year, um, and uh, I thought, my mind hasn't changed with bringing in Nolan Patrick or Dodonoff. Um, I think this. Team could take a little bit of a step back this year uh, because of, again, the lack of depth at center. We uh, Lane or not being there. I do like Laurent Brossois, though. He did very well for with uh, Hollebuck in Winnipeg. But Robin Laner has come back and, set, and really worked hard in the offseason, apparently lost a few pounds. And uh, if he can put it all together, you may not even think that Laner is gone. And if that's the case, they're going to crush it this year, I believe. Um, defense is fairly fine unless injuries happen, and then they're in trouble. In fact, all through their lineup. Peyton Krebs, I hope he's ready for uh, Vegas fans. 
Uh, besides that, though, Sven Barch has just never been able to put it together in the NHL very well. Uh, Gage Quinn, these are all just minor league guys that you fill in for a very short time that you don't really want on a regular basis. Same as D. And that's the problem. If injuries hit, there could be some trouble in Vegas. Well, that's my full 42, and now you have seen all what we had for the Pacific Division. That went 40 minutes. Oh, my gosh, do I talk a lot. All right, that was my full 42. Have a great day, everybody. Hope to see you on the stream, Cape. Bye.